So the class D amplifier is quite easy to understand. So what we do in class D amplifier, it's very simple. We just modulate the audio signal with a high frequency of oscillation. It's basically the triangular wave. So what you're doing is you're taking an analog input and comparing it with a triangular wave of, uh, let's say it's something around 250 kilohertz of frequency. But the question can be like, why you are comparing with 250 kilohertz frequency? It can be anything. It can be 10 kilohertz, it can be 1 megahertz. Why just something like 250 or 300 kilohertz of frequency? The answer is basically the Nyquist says that in order to have a perfect reconstruction at the output, you need to have a twice frequency than the audio band. Now the audio band is for 20 kilohertz. So you need to have a 40 kilohertz of frequency. Now, the problem is you need to have again a good reconstruction at the output. So we basically gave across 10 time of frequency. So we are talking about something like 200 to 300 kilohertz of uh, frequency. But why not something like 1 megahertz or so? The reason is we are feeding these signals to the MOSFET bridge. Now if you are feeding a high frequency to the MOSFET bridge, basically you are incurring a lot of switching losses and you don't want that. So basically that is why you take something around 10 to 15 times of an audio band which is uh, 250 to 300 kilohertz of frequency of operation. Okay. Then what you do is, basically if you see, if you compare our audio signal with a triangular wave, you get a PWM with a varying duty cycle. Now the duty cycle will be maximum at the peaks of the audio signal and minimum at the minimum of the audio signal. Now when it is given to the edge bridge, the MOSFET bridge, which is basically the binary switches, now what you are doing is, at the output you are getting a signal, a PWM signal. Basically you have modulated this, these signals. Now you need to reconstruct that signal. Then you will be using an LC filter for that. LC filter, lossless filter, and that is why you use an LC filter, not an RC filter and all. So again, at the output, what you get is basically a very clean, distortion-free audio signal. So as I told you, in order to have a reconstruction of the audio signal at the output, you need to have an LC filter. Now if you see here in a block diagram, basically this is how there is this comparator and the audio signal is compared with this high frequency triangular wave. And then these are the h power MOSFET bridge. Now these two are connected together and these two are connected together. And the outputs are basically the inverse. So this is A and then, then they, this is A bar. Now you see here, and there's a very important thing to note. Now this portion here is a completely distal portion. Basically you're talking about all switching. Here you're talking about the audio inputs and also there might be control logic which is sitting here. Now, so this is more of an analog portion and this is more of a distal portion. The class D amplifier is having two particular sections. So it's an analog section and also the distal section. Now, if there's two subsystem inside an IC, you need to make sure that you, need, you are having a noise-free operation. For that, what we have done inside the IC is basically we have segregated the analog portion and the distal portion itself. So if you see here inside the IC, so this is the control, which is all the analog control, and this is the distal portion of it, which is having the power MOSFET banks and all. So it's, you see there is a complete separation between them, and what you can have is basically because of that, you can have a star connection ground. Now the ground is also separated, so there is analog ground and there is also the power ground. Now that means with a star connection, you can definitely achieve a noise-free performance.